Are there ancient passageways that are open now that allow us to walk in cycles of continuous blessings? Many Jewish people that do not know the Messiah have tapped into this, while few Christians have. Hmm. Now it's your turn. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Wow, are you here. Joshua, Caleb, David had the Shekhinah glory on them. As a traditional Jewish man, that same glory rescued me and gave me something I and most believers never knew was possible, experiential knowledge of God. And that same glory is in this studio right now and will give you the same experiential knowledge of God. Jesus actually walked into my guest, Dr. Sharon Nesbitt's bedroom at age 20 and told her she'd have a worldwide ministry of miracles, signs, and wonders. Then, 22 years ago, the Messiah commissioned her to teach believers the last things she wanted. Sharon, what were those two things? Well, those two things said was to preach the gospel and then to teach about his feast. But when I was 20 years old, eight, at 18, my mom died. At, at 20, my dad died. I hated God. I didn't want God. I cursed God out. And my last ditch effort after drinking and smoking, trying to get rid of the grief, I, I cried out and asked the, the Father, if you're real, show me. Jesus stepped in my bedroom. And some people say, how you know it was Jesus? Because I saw the nail scars. And he stepped in and gave me the biggest hug <laughs> and melt all of the fear, the pain, the trauma, and the grief away. And the pure love of Jesus surrounded me. The love that I didn't experience from my mom and father is what I felt from him, what I felt like I lost. And he pushed me back and said, you're going to go around the world teaching people and preaching the gospel and healing the sick with miracle signs and wonders. And you got to know, I grew up in a certain denomination and we didn't believe any of that. <laughs> we didn't believe in women preachers. We didn't believe in signs, wonders, or miracles. And so, so I was left with all of this, and he says, you're going to do it by faith. So, you know, I'm thinking you have this supernatural grace, this supernatural anointing to do it. But it was like I had to study to find out. I studied men and women who walked in the supernatural. I, I went to conferences. I consumed myself with reading and studying and looking at the scriptures, scriptures we never read growing up. And I began to see the power and the anointing of God begin to rest upon my life. And we saw miracles after miracles, signs and wonders. We began to travel all overseas. And then 22 years later, he, st- he asked me to start a church. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to do that. And he said, I want you to teach my people the feast. And I was observing the feast, but no way did I want to teach the people the feast. We're in the South now. <laughs> there, there are a few other things you wanted to teach people. Absolutely. That. Faith, love, finances, uh-huh. something else, not the feast, because we had to talk about holy days and the holidays. And when we talk about the holy days and the convocations uh, that are tied to the feast, you begin to see the very power and the essence of these cycles of blessings. And um, I went kicking and screaming, and people called us all kinds of things. But today, said people are calling me, asking me, what about those feasts? And how do you celebrate the feasts? And what are they? They're really inquisitive now. And so I'm so honored that God would choose us to do that. Well, Sharon teaches, and this is very important, that celebrating the feast days enables you to enter a portal. Sharon, what is a portal? And why is it so important? Portals are gateways. They're segways, doors, or windows to another dimension. You know, Adam and Eve, they uh, sinned, and we lost the ability to transcend dimensions and times and seasons. And so these portals or doors 
uh, give us access to the other side. Jesus said, I stand at your door. So that means you become a portal to the other side. He says you were translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his dear son. So that was a portal that we went through when we got saved. Mm -hmm. And so we become that access where we can transverse back and forth and bring things out of heaven to the earth. Uh, why are the seven feasts of Israel types and shadows of Jesus? They point to the Messiah. Each one of them has a significant meaning as it points to the burial, the death, the burial, the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and his coming back. And so when we look at Passover, he died on Passover, Pesach. Unleavened bread is when we get rid of the sin. He was buried in unleavened bread. First fruit, he got up. He got up as the firstborn from the dead. And then we look at Shaviot, which is Pentecost, which is the giving of the Holy Ghost. 3,000 died in the Old Testament, but 3,000 got sa saved in the New Testament. And the Holy Spirit comes to give us that life, that power. So the four spring feasts, gives us the death, burial, resurrection, and the giving of the Holy Spirit. But the three fall feasts is a precursor to when Jesus is coming. We have Rosh Hashanah, which is the head of the year or the Feast of Trumpets. And that's where we engage that creative power. And then we have uh, Yom Kippur, which is the Day of Atonement, which Jesus is our high priest. We don't need a, a high priest or goats or bulls anymore, but the precious blood of Jesus now covers us. And then we have Sukkot, which is the Feast of Tabernacle, where we're going to tabernacle together. See, we don't know what year he's coming, but we know what season he's coming. He's coming in the fall. The big question I have, though, is it uh, a have to? Is it a salvation issue? Um, uh, these feasts, uh, to what degree is it a requirement? No, it's not a salvation issue, but it gives me revelation of my salvation. Ah. And I don't have to, I get to. Okay. When we return, you will see just how supernatural her teaching and books are. While reading her book, a woman went to heaven and was healed of a fatal disease. Be right back. We will be right back to it's supernatural. Hello, YouTube, Mishpocha. Mishpocha is a Hebrew word. It means family. This is Sid Roth. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. If you've been blessed by this show, please subscribe. Then click the bell so you won't miss a single episode of It's Supernatural. We now return to It's Supernatural. <laughs> Dr. Sharon, you, you went in kicking and screaming, but you knew God told you to study the feasts, the, the biblical feasts, to teach the biblical feasts, to be a pastor in the South when it wasn't too popular. What did God do by your step of obedience? What is it today? What does is, what is your congregation look like? Well, we have over 600 people in our church. We've got all kind of building projects going. We have a school in Guatemala and Kenya, so we're worldwide. But our church uh, has miracle signs and wonders. Uh, I remember a young lady who transitioned, she passed, and um, her husband called me and says, Anne is dead. And um, because we always celebrate the feast, we always celebrate the feast and we we're always sowing in the feast. And Anne has a baby. Three days later, she's in the hospital. I'm out of town. Her husband calls me screaming and crying and says, Anne is gone. Anne is gone. And uh, the spirit of faith leaped up on me. And he, I told him, shut up, be quiet, go back in there and do what I taught you to do. Because I teach them to walk by faith, declare the word, decree what they want to see. And he started decreeing life over her. But Sid, she had transitioned, gone into the heavens, and was in a classroom with Miles Monroe. 
<laughs> That's the teacher. <laughs> yeah. So that tells you when you get to heaven, we're not just going to eat honey and drink milk, you know. We're going to be still learning and training. And she heard our voices, and Jesus told her to come back. He was decreeing one of our books called Seeds for Divine Health, decreeing that over her dead corpse. She came back in her body, and now, um, you know, she's a mom and no, no residue. They said she'd be on medicine all her life. No, she doesn't take any medicine. The baby is fine, and she's living a productive life. You know, you say when we celebrate these feasts in freedom, yes. it causes a portal or passageway to heaven. Um, tell me, you've had many experiences. Yes. Your congregation has had many experiences. Tell me one more experience in reference to the portal of the feast and something supernatural. We had another young lady, uh, Dr. Brenda, had an aneurysm, a stroke, and a heart attack. The doctor said if she lived, she'd be a vegetable. Mm. Because we had just celebrated a feast, did the same thing, started decreeing the word out of one of our books. She had sowed a significant seed at one of the feasts just a couple of days before. And because she sowed that seed, said, the doctors gave her no hope. She had 10% chance of living and 5% of ever living a productive life. Today, Dr. Brenda is healthy and whole. She takes no medicine. She has all of her faculties. Matter of fact, she says, I feel better and I feel stronger than I did before I had the aneurysm. <laughs> it, we see the cycles of blessings, a cycle of blessings happen. Health and healing spring forth speedily. The Bible says there are seven blessings to celebrating the feast. And so we decree those and we, we engage God and remind him of those blessings. I there was one feast uh, we had just started in the ministry. The Lord told us it was a Passover feast, and the Lord told us to sow a $10,000 seed. He might have told us to sow a million dollars because we didn't have it. We had just started the ministry. We were looking for a building, and we just, we just got the seed. We just start just asking people to bring their pennies to get this $10,000 seed. Remember, we only had 50 people back then. And uh, we finally got the $10,000, sold it into a Jewish ministry. Hmm. Three days later, we found the building and God gave it to us supernaturally with no money. Hmm. You know, hey, if you're a Christian, get in on our Jewish blessings. <laughs> I mean, you know, parents didn't make a dummy. Go for it. <laughs> uh, in a moment, uh, Sharon will pray for a release of glory and miracles. Be right back. We will be right back to It's Supernatural. Did you know that God really wants you to keep your appointment with Him? And in that appointment, you're going to become one. Your intimacy level with Him, your hunger, your desire for Him is going to be next level. And you're going to experience the free flow of God for supernatural things as you keep your appointment with God. Call or go online at SidRoth.org to receive Dr. Sharon Nesbitt's brand new book, Accessing Ancient Portals, Unlocking the Hebraic Foundations of Faith to Experience the Supernatural. You also get her brand new exclusive three CD audio teaching series, Your Appointments with God. These powerful spiritual resources are yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9947. With Dr. Nesbitt's book, you will understand how God's invitation to access portals, doors, and gateways brings the kingdom of heaven down on the earth. Realize how approaching God's appointed times with love and obedience aligns you with God's plans for you. Tap into the divine cycles and seasons of blessings to radically shift the trajectory of your life. Learn secrets behind the daily, weekly, and monthly appointments God commanded Israel to observe and receive divine keys that unlock the supernatural benefits God has for you. 
Dr. Sharon Nesbitt's exclusive CD set, Your Appointments with God, is like getting your own special invitation signed by God to enter in and discover the specific daily watch time that God has assigned for you. Receive special revelation during convocation times of meeting. Experience how the seven feasts God commanded Israel to observe are active for you too as miracles began happening and so much more. Father, we thank you for everyone who have received these teachings. Let a new anointing and a new grace come upon them. In Jesus' name, amen. Call or go online at SidRoth.org to receive Dr. Sharon Nesbitt's brand new book, Accessing Ancient Portals, Unlocking the Hebraic Foundations of Faith to Experience the Supernatural. You also get her brand new exclusive three CD audio teaching series, Your Appointments with God. These powerful spiritual resources are yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9947 or send your check to Sid Roth, It's Supernatural, P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9947. We now return to It's Supernatural. Sharon, some say, hey, we're in the new covenant now. Not, the, and they almost say it with disdain, not in the old covenant, uh, why should we celebrate these feasts? Because Jesus celebrated them, and He said they are holy convocations forever. He said the last time I looked at what forever mean, for me, forever. Mean forever. What's convocation mean? A holy convocation is in a meeting place with Him. It's a divine appointment hmm. that God says every cycle or season, every year, I want to meet with you. There are divine appointments. You have a divine appointment right this moment. A divine appointment to know. I mean, you see me, you see my guests, and you know there's more. That's because many of you don't know the Messiah, and many that know the Messiah have kept your toes in the water but haven't plunged in. You haven't had your own experiential knowledge with God. Repeat this prayer out loud with me and jump in out loud. Dear God, Dear God I've committed many sins against you, for which I'm so sorry. I believe your precious blood washes away every sin. And you say, because of the blood, you remember my sins no more. And now that I'm clean, Jesus, come and live inside of me. I make you my Savior. You've rescued me from my sins. And now I make you my Lord. Amen. Well, Dr. Sharon, I've gotten to know you a little bit while you're here, and I am so excited. I'm going to turn you loose in the Holy Spirit to pray whatever God wants you to pray for the viewers. All right. For all of you that are watching, you could be like me. You were grieving, you were hopeless, helpless, and Jesus walked in my room supernaturally. I'm praying for a supernatural encounter for you. You might be saying, I know God, but I don't have a personal relationship with Him. See, it just prayed the prayer. Now, I want you to begin to pray that you have a supernatural encounter with Him that will change the trajectory of your life, that things will begin to turn and you can see the light of who God has called you to be. I want to pray for you, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I ask you by the Spirit of the living God that you open the eyes of their understanding that you give them the inner penetrating power to see who you are in you. And they begin to walk in power, authority, with a known identity that they are a son of the Most High, that walk with the power to heal the sick, to raise the dead, and to cast out devils. The same commission you gave me, we ask you to give to them. We give you praise and we give you glory in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. If you receive that prayer, just go ahead and lift your hands. 
God is going to do something supernatural in your life. Begin to engage and thank him for what he is going to do in your life to actively cause that anointing to be imparted in you that you may demonstrate with glory and power. He took this little girl who was broke down, cast down, who was hurt and felt like God didn't love me and caused me to walk with power around the world. And if he could do it for me, he's going to do it for you. I'm praying for you. I'm asking the Holy Spirit to fall upon you now with an experience you've never had, exceedingly abundantly above all you could think or ask. We thank you for that supernatural impartation right now in Jesus' mighty name. Just lift your hands and go ahead and praise him and give him glory for what he would do in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Dr. Sharon, just very briefly, yes, I know you're prophetic. What is coming in America and in the world that God has shown you? Well, we already know that the digital currency is going to come in. We can slow it down if we begin to pray. We can minimize some of the things that is coming up on the earth. I mean, they can, fortunes could shrink yes. in a second. Yes. But I tell people, our kingdom has never had a recession. <laughs> our kingdom has never been broke. We've never had to worry about the dollar slipping in our kingdom. We have never had to worry about pandemics in our kingdom. But if we as sons begin to pray and decree and legislate with the, ex with the executive power that he's given us from the throne room and start bringing order to the chaos and not living defeated lives, struggling and straining, but ruling and reigning, we can see the tide turn. He said he's given us authority over this earth to rule, to reign, and to have dominion. And it's time for us to take our dominion. Well, as God says to the nation Israel, it is the set time. It's the set time for natural Israel, the set time for natural Israel to know the Messiah. It is the set time for the sons and daughters of the living God to operate in the kingdom you're really sent from, yes. heaven, and bring it onto earth Hallelujah. in Yeshua's name. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. I'm Sid Roth here with Dr. Sharon Nesbitt, and I have to tell you, Sharon shared a so short message at our staff prayer meeting, and I know as a fact, many Christians know the bottom line because they've read it in the Bible, but few Christians practice it. And it had a supernatural impact. As of this moment, you'll be practicing it and removing the barriers to the miraculous, to the promises of God. You'll speed up everything. Dr. Sharon Nesbitt. Thank you, Sid. Um, recently, we was teaching on a series called Supernatural Abilities and what inheritance the believer has and how we can operate in signs, wonders, and miracles by the Holy Ghost. And so we was teaching this and giving all these things like the love of God has been shed abroad in my heart so I can love supernaturally. Uh, I can lay hands on the six according to Mark 16. Uh, all of these supernatural things that the Holy Spirit lives in me that have the supernatural ability to know the truth and it would set me free. And the Holy Ghost said, tell them the kryptonite to their supernatural abilities. And I was like, I want to keep telling us about the supernatural abilities. And he said, but if you don't deal with the kryptonite, you won't operate in your ability. And the first place he took me was Mark 11, 22. And we know we started in 22. We love verse 22, have faith in God. And everybody know how the God kind of faith. Then he says, whatsoever you say to this mountain, be that it shall to this mountain, be thy removed, be cast in the sea. And it shall what? Obey you. It's going to obey you. But we don't go to verse 25. 
when you stand praying, forgive. And the Lord says to me, he says, there are so many in the body of Christ that has these supernatural abilities, but they haven't forgiven yet. And it's the kryptonite to their supernatural ability, to your power, to your health, to your finances. And I began to do a long study on forgiveness, bitterness, anger, fear, and resentment. He says, when you stand praying, forgive. Now, I know a lot of us can say we forgive. We say it with our mouth, but do we really mean it from our heart? What is forgiving? Forgiving is a choice, is not an emotion. Because you attach the emotion to the bitterness, the hurt, the anger, the pain, you think it's an emotion. And bitterness is really just changing your mind about the situation. I mean, forgiveness is just changing your mind about the situation. It is thought reversal and releasing the person from the debt that is owed them. And so the Lord says, Sharon, tell them to forgive. And then he says, anybody that you have ill will towards. Now we know about the forgiving, but the ill will, he had to break it down to me. Like anybody you resent, anybody get on your nerves, come on here. Anybody you judge before time, anything that causes you, even the Bible says in Ephesians 4, 32, he says, be kind and compassion one to another, forgiving each other, even as Christ for God's sake forgave you. And so what I had to realize is until I forgive, God won't forgive me. That's right. That's right. And so one of the minute things we think in the kingdom is forgiving, which is a big thing, a huge thing. It's a spiritual law. And when you break the spiritual law, you get in prison. The Bible says in Matthew 18, I want to read this. Jesus tells a parable about an important uh, situation where this, this man is in debt. The king absorbs all the debt, relieves the man of the debt. But then the man goes out and find everybody that owes him and then subject punishment on them. And when the king finds out, he says, you wretched man. But he says, this is like the kingdom that when you don't forgive, you get torment. And you know what he said? He said, send him to the prison and torment him. Unforgiveness is torment. How do I know? Recently we were in Texas and there was a lady in a wheelchair and she came up and um, I said, uh, what's wrong with you? And she said, the doctors don't know. And I said, have you ever walked? She said, yes, this happened six years ago. And I said, well, what happened six years? Cause a curse don't come without a cause. That's right. She opened a door somewhere for this thing to attack her body because your body naturally heals itself. And she said, well, I got divorced six years ago. I said, well, you haven't forgiven your husband. She said, oh yeah, I forgave him. I released him. I forgave him. He's gone on with another wife. I forgave him. I said, no, you haven't really forgiven. And she just broke because she could say it with her mouth, but really when you engage it with your heart. And so we took her through the five steps of getting uh, cleansed. And I simply said, uh, now get up. Now she hadn't walked in six and a half years go to therapy, hadn't even walked or couldn't even move through therapy. She hops out of the wheelchair. Yes. Unforgiveness yes. had paralyzed her. Yes. Yes. I don't know what's paralyzing you today. It may be unforgiveness, bitterness, resentment, but that woman came out of her wheelchair. There was another lady. We were teaching on unforgiveness and bitterness. She's there. She has Bell palsy. She's on a cane. Her eye is closed and her face is paralyzed. The same thing. What happened? No, I'm good. I've been divorced, but I forgave my husband. I'm like, no, it's something, something. Had one of our pastors to pray for her. And she said, oh, when I was little, I was molested and raped. And I've never forgiven the man. We simply took her through the process of forgiveness. And guess what? I said, now by the power of God, face come back into alignment. Guess what? Her face came back into its proper place. Her eye opened and she doesn't have to use a cane anymore. Yeah. Unforgiveness, bitterness, anger, and resentment 
can paralyze you and it can cause sickness. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? That you have all of these supernatural abilities, but you let somebody or something stay in your heart. There was a lady who had been married for 30 years. She had stayed for cancer and we went to pray for her. And the Lord said, tell her to forgive her husband. She said, I'm not going to do it. He cheated on me and I'm not going to forgive him. I said, the Lord said you're going to die unless you forgive him. She said, well, I guess I'll die. In two days, she was dead. Some people hold on to so much hurt and, and fear and pain because it becomes their pet. Because they want to have a reason to be angry, to be hurt. Yes. They want to have a reason to say, mama did it, daddy did it. Some of you are holding your parents. Some of you are holding your exes. Some of you are holding your children. Are y'all hearing me? There, there are many of us in here resent our children because they're not living up to our expectations. And that whole thing keeps them from being who God created them to be. And so when you look in the scriptures and you begin to look at all this, he says in Luke 6, 37, he says, don't judge or you'll be judged and don't condemn or you'll be condemned. Forgive and you'll be forgiven. That's right. That if you want God to forgive you, you've got to release everybody else. And the Holy Ghost says this is kryptonite to your supernatural abilities. There was a man, there was a man named Malcolm. He had a, a major business, multimillionaire, and uh, his wife cheated with his best friend. Open that door of bitterness. Now, some of you said he had a right. He had a right to be angry. He had a right to be bitter. He had a right. Who gave him the right? The devil will always create situations so you can open that door so he can come in and cause this spirit to antagonize you and torment you. And so it's the little foxes that spoil the vine. It's the flies and the apothecary. And if you're not wise. He said, don't be ignorant of Satan's devices. It's the little stuff. Somebody cut you off uh, while you're driving. Somebody stump your toe. Your wife didn't do it right. Your husband didn't say it right. And you, feel, you start getting this thing in your spirit. And Malcolm got so angry and bitter that he lost his multi-million dollar business, lost his million dollar house, Cancer came in his body. He found a believer who said, you got to forgive them. And he says, I got a right. And most of you would say he had a right to be angry, right? There is nowhere in scripture. Why? Because the love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts. And we don't love or forgive out of our love and forgiveness. It's his. It's supernatural. Because humanity says we want to keep it. We want to hurt you. We want to exact the same pain on, on you as you did me. But no, you got to say the love of God is in my heart and I can love you. I can love my enemies. I can do good to those who are unfair to me. Come on. Yeah. It's your supernatural ability. It's anybody really want to operate in the supernatural. Oh, yeah. You got to say, God, whatever is hindering me, whoever I'm holding, what bitterness do I have in my heart? And did I forgive? Am I honoring my father and my mother? Do I love my spouse or do I resent my spouse because I feel like my spouse is holding me back? You know, the Bible says if you and your spouse are not one, your prayers are hindered. So you can't be mad at your spouse and go pray to God. He doesn't hear that. And we don't teach that because people are like, I'm going to go tell God on you. <laughs> get him God come on women we usually did get him I'm saved he ain't saved I'm praying he's not praying and God said and I'm not listening <laughs> sometimes we got to read the Bible to say God why am I feeling like this and Malcolm felt like that because he had bitterness towards his father and that door was open to attack his marriage. So don't just think I'm going to hold this and then people who are part of your life are not going to be affected. So we see where sickness, financial curses, death, we see all of these things that will cause you not to operate in the supernatural power of God. 
because you got bitterness, anger, resentment, and fear. Mm -hmm. And I can go on and on and on. I want you to do a study of how many scriptures that's in the Bible that talks about forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And I want you to say, Holy Spirit, I know she's talking to me. How do I know? Because I had to go back and see <laughs> if there was anybody I was holding, anything. You know, we always say, I hate this, I hate that. For a believer to hate anything is not scriptural. I don't even say I hate a certain food because I don't want that word in my vocabulary because I love, I love. So whatever that is, I want you to begin to lift your hands. Just, just lift your hands right now because I really believe God is causing us as a kingdom, a body of believers and sons to walk in the supernatural. And if we don't identify what short circuit our power, might have been a teacher that didn't affirm you, may have been your grandparents, it may have been an ex-lover, an ex-wife, an ex-whatever. It could be your present circumstances. It could be your marriage. You feel like your marriage held you back. You, didn't, you weren't able to go and get your degree or Maybe in your children, you had children before you could do what you're supposed to do with resentment on the job, a manager, a coworker, a boss, whatever that is. I feel like today God wants to free you. I want to pray for you, Father, in the name of Jesus. You've given me this mandate for this season to free your people so they would operate in the supernatural. We lift up. Now I want you to begin to say the name. I don't know. You got to be honest. I don't know the person. You do. You can just silently say the name or the names. Go ahead and release them. Go ahead and give that situation to the Father. Father, we release those persons, those situations to you. You said you would forgive us. You said you would wash us and cleanse us. We release them in your love, in your forgiveness, and in your blood. Now I ask you to cleanse us, wash us, remove the pain and the hurt, replace in that empty space your love, your power, your rulership, your reign, and your dominion, and give us eyes and understanding to recognize when the enemy is, is bringing circumstances to open the door to unforgiveness. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Amen.